dry wakashi and add it to our food scraps. Or what I do more specifically is I take my food scraps and as I gather them in a bucket, I layer dry wakashi in the bucket on top of every layer of food scraps. And as the bucket builds, if I have it set up with a drainage on the bottom, or another way that really simplifies this whole process is to put one bucket inside of another with holes drilled in the internal bucket so that it can drain into the bottom bucket. And you can step it even further, put a little uh, spout on the bottom so you can drain that and use it for your compost tea and so on. But to get to the point, what I do is I layer my, my food scraps up in the bucket and then I seal it off. And leave it to ferment for about two weeks. During this time, there will be some seepage because of the water concentration of the scraps. Typically, we have a lot of water in our food scraps. So as they compress and get fermented, there is a little bit of fermented excrement that comes out at the bottom. And so we can either save it in the bottom and have it separate from the potashi as it ferments, or we can use it by taking it out with a little spout, having our system set up with a spout. So after two weeks' time, I can add, I, what I do is I typically add that to my compost mm -hmm. And what it does is it accelerates the whole process of breakdown, and it also creates a higher vitality, I would say. It creates this probiotic inoculation with the probiotics that are present in the EM. Mm -hmm. Are there, uh, is this method in use uh, widely, or... Are, are there other similar methods uh, that you know of that's being used to uh, to further enhance the uh, plant and what they produce and and in the way of growth and in the way of nutrition? Is is well, there was that last part? Yeah. Is, is there a, is there a, a a process that's being used now by organic farmers for the most part in what they use in order to grow things? I would say I would say yeah. A lot of farmers are starting to apply new methods, especially with microbially enhanced uh -huh. uh, soils, doing compost tea and stuff like that, and that's becoming a lot more widespread. I see. Uh, the idea of using microbial uh, enhancement formulas, whether they be beneficial indigenous microbes or imported from a lab microbes, the idea is that it builds the vitality in the soil. It takes our oxidized soil, our soil that's exposed to the sun and it keeps being tilled and oxidized due to the elements, it takes that very oxidized soil and within it, the life forms that are living with probiotics yeah. give us antioxidants yeah. in the soil and it changes it from that degenerative state to a regenerative state. Yeah. We hear a lot about the topsoil and a lot and the topsoil being eroded. Um, has been eroded over time. Is this a process that can further enhance and keep the topsoil from from eroding in terms of the mineral and what its uh, what its uh, uh, mineral content is? If you use it, do you have to rotate your crop? Well, with, with that's a you're right on question again, Ron. The sheet mulching or the or the uh, the layer system, the no-till farming systems involve no need actually and often for any rotation of crops because each time we, we bring them back down to the soil and we put another layer on top of it and so then it gets broken down and, and it becomes fresh again it's like i was talking about creating this this layer on top yeah. of the earth it's yeah. like, like was meant is mentioned in biodynamics creating like a virgin hymen on the earth with this new layer this new edge for life to occur. It brings the energy down so that we can then plant and take the energy to come up and we and we really focus all of our plantings on this new palette. Very good. So it's it's very artistic in some ways. We're mm -hmm. creating a new palette and then we're going to design it with, with uh, all of life's creation. You know? And I would imagine based on that, after a while, after the, the, the uh, soil has been treated for a, a number of years, uh, you can pretty much grow anything on any soil then, provided you are doing this in terms of being able to enrich the soil and and to some degree cultivate it. Yeah, I, w I would say that that is a pretty accurate statement. Of course, we're 
always going to have to take into account the elements that are present in the environment, not only in the soil life, but also the environments that are coming through the air right. and coming across the land, you know, people, animals, uh, pollution, uh, prevailing winds, yeah. the annual rainstorms, you know, which way the sun angles throughout the year, all these things affect how we can do it. So, uh, to some degree, a lot of, in a lot of cases, the more organic matter you use, the better, but sometimes you can use too much organic matter, too much carbon, and now we have a nitrogen deficiency. And so using the probiotics really helps balance that, buffer it, uh -huh. um, and you can get away with a lot and, and actually still do even till farming and, and do a lot to keep the nutrients in the soil because the, the life forms, the microbes in the soil, hold the nutrients in them. Okay. Yeah, they keep the minerals in the system. They keep it cycling through the plants much yeah. more efficiently than it would be if it was just this continued till plant, till plant. Oh, the plants aren't healthy. Let's start using Roundup so <laughs> we can deal with all the weeds that are coming in or pesticides because the plants are getting sick or the, the bugs are attacking them. And so if we have a healthy, balanced system with companion planting, even plants that are beneficial, uh, to each other, when they grow to next to each other, they enhance each other's growth, we then end up with systems that are much more allowing and much more healthy. All right. Very good. Very good. Thank you for those explanations. Are, are there any other items that uh, that you'd like to touch on while we're here and uh, interviewing and uh, taping? Is there, is there any other items that perhaps we should be aware of or in terms of what's coming or... Uh, in terms of food uh, growth and food preparation and that type of thing, uh, are we uh, are, are we are we headed towards an organic type of uh, of system, or are we are we going against the tide in terms of well how we grow things? Uh, collectively speaking. Collectively speaking. Well, that's uh, we'll we'll find out. I think you know. Really, how can I answer that? Yeah. But though I, I feel that um, I feel that it's coming to a point where it's a necessity. People can't. A lot of people can't even afford food. It becomes an issue. So if if we start organizing systems where we take the people who are really needing help give them an opportunity to grow their own food and connect in that really basic way, then we'll, we'll open up a lot more opportunity for these things. And even for those people who can't, who do have homes or do have accessible property by their own doing, those people who grow their own food are going to get that further connection. Um, I don't think I addressed your question, though, exactly. Did I? Well, to the extent that we should, we have to begin to take more responsibility for our own foods is going to be an issue. I mean, whether or not, whatever stage of life we're in or whatever we have, uh, I think uh, I think the general consensus that, that we're coming to overall is that uh, we, we have to pay attention to what we have in order to grow food. Food is becoming more expensive, uh, less nutritious for the most part, and uh, less plentiful. I uh, really, uh, really admire what you're doing here, and uh, you have some very healthy-looking plants here, and uh, I know that's a result of what you've been doing in terms of how you do it. Uh, so hats off to you, and good luck, and uh, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>